Our next speaker, um, uh, slight change in program, Matthew Howard is unwell, but he has sent along a colleague uh, from the Centre uh, for Robotics Research at King's College London. Fan Wu is a PhD candidate, works with Matthew, and his focus is on soft robotics and machine learning. So I'll hand over to Fan. Thank you. Um, okay, hello, uh, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for giving me the, uh, this opportunity to introduce our research project on uh, variable sensing technology. So today I would like to introduce how we uh, develop our uh, variable sensors to uh, measure muscle uh, signals and how we make them using a uh, digital stage. So this uh, uh, project is conducted by uh, Dr. Matthew Howard and he collaborated uh, with uh, a textile artist uh, who, uh, 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 who is, uh, uh, which is Karina Thompson. Um, um, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Howard um, couldn't ma manage to come here uh, due to some medical uh, issues. So uh, I'm his uh, first-year uh, first PhD student. So uh, here I'm here to present uh, our work uh, in his place. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, introduce, introduce a little bit about our uh, groups. So we, uh, we are from the uh, ro uh, Robotics uh, re uh, Center for Robotics Research uh, within the informatics department. So uh, this is where we're based in the central London. Um, perhaps this is the best that we can get from the informatics uh, department. But unfortunately, our lab is based in the uh, is located in the basement of the building, <laughs> so we don't actually have this view every day. Um, so this is our uh, robot learning lab, uh, uh, led by Dr. Howard. Um, I will skip the technical details. Uh, details. So basically, w we focused on. Uh, how we can transfer the uh, knowledge of human behavior to control robotic devices. Um, so this, this led to uh, some research about how uh, the idea of programming by demonstration. So which means that you don't need to be an expert of programming, you don't need to be a, a robotist, but you can control the robot by, by your own body. So in, the, in this video, you can see that we pick up the, the muscle signal and uh, use that signal to control the, uh, the robotic joint uh, on the left. And uh, interesting is that uh, that robotic joint is an uh, uh, agonistic design, which means that we, we, we can uh, control uh, not only the, the joint angle of the, the robot, but also we can control the, the muscle stiffness by uh, co-contrasting both the springs. Uh, but a big question we're facing is that how we can measure the muscle uh, activity data in a long term, in, in a long term, and uh, in everyday daily life. Because we got a, a lot of nice devices that we can use in the lab, but uh, we, we can't really uh, use them in everyday daily life. We, so this uh, leads us to explore the idea of wearable sensing, which means that uh, we so in the. On the, le on the right, uh, you see the jogging leggings that we developed uh, these jogging, uh, jogging pants and uh, we, imbe we embedded the, the wearable sensors into, into the clothing. And then we, invite, we invited uh, some volunteers to uh, run in the head park and we measured their uh, muscle activity data for hours in, in the in head park. And given that kind of data, we can model and uh, predict the, the muscle fatigue and uh, also uh, to uh, to, to predict the uh, possibility of uh, muscle injury. So now I would like to uh, introduce the story of uh, how we developed uh, this uh, device. So we uh, first uh, we collaborated with uh, Karina uh, Thompson, uh, who is a textile artist. She used to um, uh, use a lot of uh, medical uh, data to, to produce uh, art pieces. For example, such uh, images are uh, some example of the uh, ultrasound, uh, medical ultrasound images. But uh, in our project, it's, uh, it was different that it involves uh, uh, her uh, skills not, not to uh, create uh, works based on data, but also to create data. So we, uh, we, 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 we tried uh, a lot of ways from both high technology way and low technology way to for problem solving. Um, this is the, the first uh, project we collaborated. It's uh, for a three-month Huxton 
uh, project, we tried, uh, uh, it was the first time we tried to uh, integrate the variable sensors into some everyday items like this uh, gardening glove. So on the glove, you can see that we, uh, it's our, the, the earliest uh, attempt that we try to uh, embed the sensors into, into everyday items. And this is another example that we uh, first try to uh, integrate the uh, variable uh, electrodes into the clothing. And uh, as we progress, uh, we need to uh, use our engineering skills to ensure that what we developed will be really functional. Um, So here in the in the video, um, Ali, who is a senior PhD student, uh, he explains what he did to uh, test the, the data quality. So when we use the conductive threads, we find that uh, we often face some problem of uh, insulation problem. That the, the conductive threads may be connected to somewhere we uh, don't want, want them to connect to. Yeah, so uh, then we explored a lot of uh, different designs about how to insulate the sewing circuits in, in the clothes. So the, the purpose threads are uh, some normal threads that to we try to use them to insulate the circuit. So that turns out that uh, our design can uh, reproduce the signal just as other uh, wild devices. So, and uh, eventually our, uh, we, turn, we settled on a, a very nice de uh, design that we can integrate the variable sensor into clothing such as this sleeve. And it can work for, for hours uh, very stably. So in this video, you can show on the on the monitors uh, when the when the tester move his arm, it can uh, on the monitor we can see the the data that uh, recording the, through the, the variable sensor on his on his uh, sleeve. And uh, we we then uh, explored a lot of uh, different uh, design patterns uh, and used the embroidery sewing machine to produce, uh, produce these uh, electrodes. And uh, one of the scientific uh, uh, output is that we published a, a, a scientific paper on a, on a scientific journal. So we also tried to, uh, as uh, I mentioned earlier, also uh, use the, this uh, sensing technology for uh, some medical studies such as uh, muscle injury uh, studies. And uh, another kind of output of the research is that uh, we 
collaborated with uh, Karina to produce the, some um, some art pieces for ex uh, exhibition. Uh, for example, this summer in the other uh, summer summer house, we uh, Karina uh, made a, a a piece of art for the exhibition on the theme of uh, in vitro virtualization. So on the left, uh, just give you an idea of the the uh, it's it, it's the. I think it's the, it's the uh, virtualized eggs uh, before prior to implantation um, of the two boys below, and on, on the right is the Karina's workshop. He, um, we collaborated to uh, made a, a fabric speaker that it embedded into a thin cube, and it it's called a thin cube in sense of um, when you touch it, it can uh, play out the music when you t uh, when you touch the when you touch it, and it can play out different volume, different sound of music when you touch different places. And now we, um, based on our uh, development on the, of the uh, variable sensing technology, we just started a, a project in South Africa a um, few, few weeks ago. So um, one thing uh, we, are, we, we are aware of is that uh, about one million people globally have a disability. And uh, about 80% of these are living in the developing countries. So the problem is that although we have got uh, a lot of sensing technology, but they are not uh, affordable, they are quite expensive. So our idea is that because uh, our wearable sensors are quite cheap, about 10 pounds per each, so uh, they are quite affordable that can be used uh, by the people, uh, disabled people and the amputees in the developing country. So this, this video shows uh, an early attempt by uh, a master student from South Africa. Um, he made this prosthetic hand. Um, sorry. So that's you relaxing. Yeah. So he used his uh, uh, muscle signal to control, try to control the prosthetic hand. Um, yeah, and this is, uh, we just started this project and uh, we want to uh, integrate our low cost sensing technology into the low cost uh, prosthetic hand and provide them to the amputees in South Africa and uh, also other African countries. And uh, we, we also want to address the uh, income inequality problem in development countries because South Africa is one of the, the most uh, unequal country, uh, country in the world. And uh, they face a lot of the majority of the uh, population face a, a, a problem of un, un, unemployment. Uh, for example, over 80, 50% uh, of the young, younger generation are unemployed. So, um, when we were in South Africa, we found that a very interesting thing is that uh, the local women, although they lost the, the job in textile factory, because there used to be a large uh, textile industry in South Africa, but uh, uh, gradually they all of them. I moved to a country like China, uh, Vietnam, in India. But they still can use their craft skills to produce some uh, things, like they use the tele, uh, telephone wells to produce the souvenirs and sell our market. So in the future, we hope that we can see uh, these uh, women uh, using their skills, craft skills to produce our wearable sensors in South Africa. Um, so finally, these are the people involved in the project. On the left is uh, Karina Thompson. And uh, on the right is uh, um, Brandon and Ali, who, who are the senior PhD students, and uh, Roger Rian, uh, Professor Rian Stoffers uh, in South Africa, and uh, also P Professor uh, Kaspar. Um, uh, he he's now uh, transferred to uh, moved to uh, Queen Mary University. So, uh, thank you very much. Yeah.